Tom, did you get that email from Rocky? No, which one? He just sent me this email about the Rio Marignon, something like that. The, the Rio what? Rio Marignon, Marignon. Um, it's like the longest undammed river in South America. I think he might have even said it's the longest undammed river in the world. And it's like the Grand Canyon of the Colorado River. Sounds awesome, I've never even heard of it. What do you think? Sounds like a real adventure. Let's go do it. The Rio Marañón may sound like an obscure river in a land far, far away, but then you may not know it's connected to the largest and most famous river in the world, the mighty Amazon. Not only is it connected, it is the primary source of the Amazon. In fact, the original name of the Amazon is the Rio Marañón. In 1541, the infamous Spanish conquistador Pizarro ordered Lieutenant Oriana to descend the length of this uncharted river from the High Andes to the Atlantic. During the exploration, Oriana and his soldiers reported being attacked by women as ferocious as the river, conjuring images of the Amazons from Greek mythology. To this day, the name stands. As the Marignon descends, the river journeys through a multitude of biomes, from glaciers to high desert from majestic canyons to lush rainforest. Starting high in the Peruvian Andes at over 16,000 feet, the Waiwash Mountains give birth to the Marañón. So right now we are in the headwaters of the Rio Marignan, doing some fly fishing, not very successfully. Good thing we're not relying on my fishing skills for dinner. We brought ramen noodles. We might be by day eight. <laughs> Looks like tomorrow we only have about 13 or 10 kilometers to Waiapa and three to camp. Twelve days later, we headed back to Juarez to meet up with Rocky Cantos and Chad Thatcher. There we prepared for a true adventure to tackle the Rio Marañón's burgeoning floodwaters for a high water descent of the inner gorge. Well, we're getting ready for the upper part of the Rio Marignon. And we have to pack everything into our little kayaks here for four days, including all our food, all our warm clothing, sleeping gear, everything. And it's going to be a four or five section of river. So we may be doing, in, you know, squirting all the way down the, the river. We'll see.
think I've ever been so happy to see Class 1 Whitewater. Our first flat section of river all day. Three days and 130 miles of continuous Class 4 or 5 Whitewater left us yearning for Calm River and a fully equipped raft flotilla. It was a damn poop. The entire time was rapids, 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 rapids. Yeah, the, we got to see the inner gorge at high water, which was probably 25 to 30,000 CFS. It was exciting. Just got done with our self support kayak mission, and now we're rigging their ass and gonna put on for day one. Ready, man. <laughs> Listo para todo. Sí. En este video vamos a escuchar a comunidades acá en el Perú y en todo el mundo que han vivido los impactos de las represas. Primero nos preguntamos, ¿qué es una represa? Una represa es una pared que se construye para bloquear el flujo de un río. La pared crea un lago artificial llamado un reservorio. 
Entre más grande la represa, I think the government make the people believe it, it is a, one of the best river for get energy. The un unfortunate thing about Rio Marañón is uh, in 2010, uh, Alan Garcia, the president of Peru, made an, an agreement with the president of Brazil to uh, place a lot of hydroelectric dams all over the big rivers in Peru. They have a 22 projects of dams right here. They want to make it in this river. But if, it, if those plans were realized, it would turn the whole river into just one series of reservoirs without any free-flowing river remaining. Many people will be moving to other places that they, they life will change a lot. Maybe they will go to big city and they don't, they never been in that big cities living in places like that. They are really rich to live in right here because they have kind of everything. They don't need nothing from other places, from the big city. These dams also, the, the reservoirs flood out the villages. So the villagers will have to be relocated. Uh, they generally get a pretty raw deal out of it all. The land that they relocate them to usually isn't very terrible, very, very good land. It changes their lifestyle. A lot of the people end up moving to the cities and ends up being, <laughs> leaving a lot of uh, bad uh, feelings. People are worried about the dam projects right here. I think that river needs to be protecting and save it because it could be another wonder place to go in. Just in this little town of Bautas, um, on the side of the river here, where the the top of the reservoir would come of Charindos if they were to build it. We went in there, and there's an office for the Charindos Dam, and we started asking her questions about, you know, who's the who's the dam going to benefit, things like that. The lady in there also told us that uh, the villagers downstream of the of Balsas, of where the dam, where the reservoir would come up to, the, the villages that are going to be flooded out by the reservoir, she told us that they're going to be better off with the reservoir moving. She said they don't have electricity anyway, their quality of life is not so good, so it's really not that big of a deal for them to have to move and change, move locations and change their entire lives. That was her opinion.
nosotros como habitantes de la, de la ribera eh, nos sentimos como obligación, como guardianes. ¿no? Yo creo que Dios por algo nos ha hecho estar en este lugar. Que cuesta vuelta para acomodarse en otro sitio, pero ya no será lo mismo que nuestro pueblo. Yo vivo en Bendán, que pertenece al distrito de Cocabamba. La identidad se encuentra acá en nuestros pueblos y yo creo que no sería justo que nos inundaran y tendríamos que rebuscar, no sabe Dios por dónde. Yo creo que nadie quiere perder su identidad. ¿no? Sí. Como le vuelvo a decir, nosotros hemos nacido acá, nos identificamos, queremos a nuestro pueblo y queremos la forma en que vivimos. Somos felices. Sí. Es. Nosotros estamos aquí que no queremos que se haga la represa. Que todo lo natural es natural, ¿no? ya lo que viene cuando el hombre mete la mano, ejecuta el trabajo, cambiaría todo. What day is today, Marty? Today is December 13th. We're on the seventh day of the trip. Seventh day. The day after Pedro's birthday. We have, some of us have eight more days. Marty, you're on Nice. This today is day eight. Trip. Eight from Chigual. From Chigual. And when we started, day nine. I guess the jungle will be coming up tomorrow. We're going to go into the Rentema, which is where it really makes the big change. Here, this lower part of the Grand Canyon section, you see a little bit more vegetation. The waves of the Marion yesterday were awesome. They were huge. They were <clears throat> twice as big as our rafts. They were awesome. What can I say? Nunca había pasado una experiencia así como esta. Sí. <laughs> what do you think of those waves? They were like a couple feet high. They were pretty hard. <laughs> the rapids were great. Tossing and turning and, and uh, weaving up and down sideways it was great.
river's declining elevation gave way to a new climate. The scenery began to shift from a world of cactus and brown to canopy and green. With the drastically different scenery emerged a new group of people, the Awahun, northern Peru's largest indigenous population. While rivers in the U.S. often require permits, we would instead need permission from each village we passed. So we enlisted the help of local Awahun tribal chiefs, Anfalohio and Gerardo, to help us negotiate for it. Familia Sasabiato, Lutica Mamania y Yunta Chamo, Cada Kinere, Via Posanta, Monahamo, pero ellos no tienen confianza en el ah, gobierno. Ninguno hay confianza por eso. Eso ellos tienen duda. Sí, ah, sí, entiendo. Sí, sí, entiendo. Que, o sea, sí, pues es bonito cuando vienen a conversar, joden. Sí. The Awahun villagers of Yupikosa, a fiercely independent people, have fought for years to preserve their land. They've battled off Incas, conquistadors, and now mineral extraction and a potential dam project threatened their way of life. So naturally, a group of white folks floating down the river is a bit suspicious. Never be ahead of this talked to the mayor of uh, Imacita and we just got permission from him of some sort of piece of paper all our names are going to be on it but that's not we don't know if that's permission from every village we boat option we can have take a raft down option we can have taking out taking out option let's um let's go have a group discussion and we'll figure out what we want to do for you to take these motor boats I'm going down all the way. You will do less 
less time maybe. Yeah. You will pass for the same way. You will have the same view. And you don't need to row. To go in. And I think it's a good idea to open the doors to go through the jungle. But um, with that raft, that raft is make it to look strange to people. The Awahoon, although friendly, were highly skeptical of our presence. With hundreds of Awahoon villages downstream, gaining proper permission from each village proved insurmountable. If only one village declined, our expedition would be stuck with few options to exit. Out of respect for the local tribal chiefs and villagers and the safety of our team, we decided to end the rafting portion of the expedition. Well, we're de-rigging our trip. Uh, we're here de-rigging a little sooner than we thought. Take uh, some local boat, boats around and uh, a little less conspicuous that way. And uh, this would be a good plan. However, five of us sketched out a new plan to continue our journey. Instead of using conspicuous rafts and kayaks, we would use local transportation. After much negotiating, we found a local boatsman willing to take us further downstream, deep into the lush jungles of the Marañón. So right now we're getting on this cargo boat to go to Lagunas. Uh, we got we got to Santa Marisa last night on a speedboat, and we wanted to keep going, so we're gonna go ahead and get on. the largest jungle city in the world and right behind us we have the incredible mighty real Amazonas. One of the things I did get out of this trip is that there are towns, there are people living where the reservoirs are going to be 
and they've lived there for hundreds if not thousands of years and their homes are going to be flooded by the reservoirs. What kind of changes are you going to see down here in all these communities that are that have been here forever? Um, I mean, maybe less water, the water's going to evaporate. Obviously, the environment's going to be impacted. In what ways? It's hard to say. She explicitly told a few of us in our group that the people living downstream that were going to be flooded out by the dam didn't have good access to water, they didn't have good access to electricity, they didn't have good access to modern, the modern things that we find valuable. It's just completely free-flowing. The longest free-flowing river in the world can go all the way, hopefully I'll be able to go all the way to the ocean. I think forcing them cha to change their lives in the name of progress is but uh, unfair. The world's becoming more and more interconnected. We're becoming a global community, more or less. You see it all the time here. Uh, you see people interacting from different cultures and coming together and sharing ideas. Rio Marañón is the primary source of the Rio Arizona. Um, and it is the longest unblocked, undammed river, free-flowing river. This is Peru. To protect the Marañón and its inhabitants will ultimately be their decision. We came to see this amazing river to understand its significance to Peruvians and the rest of the world. A dam like Charindos could produce 600 megawatts of energy, 40 permanent jobs, but the people and cultures we encountered will face a drastically different and uncertain future. Baba Diem eloquently put it, in the end, we will conserve only what we love. We will love only what we understand, and we will understand only what we have been taught. Organizations such as Sierra Rios and International Rivers strive to teach people about these magnificent rivers and vibrant communities. Rivers flow, bring sustenance, they create life and energy, they shape the world, and provide us with a spirit of adventure. Let the Marañón flow. Finish the, the entire thing from source to sea.